Episode 1 starts with a bit of a cop-out. The Citadel has just exploded, Gordon's been put into cold storage, only for a bunch of Vortigans to magic into G-Man's world and to hold him in place while they rescue Gordon and Alex from almost certain peril. We'll see about that. You start under some rubble until Dog finds you. Oh my god! Gordon! There, we got it. You and Alex get told the Citadel's about to blow and that you need to get as far away from it as possible. Tell me you're out of the city. Well, not quite yet. What? But then the plan changes to you two heading back into the Citadel to slow the reaction to give everybody enough time to escape. Dog decides to chuck you across the gap. Is it something I said? Okay, Dog, let's do it. Before I change my. You and Alex must then head through the citadel until you reach a door that's being blocked by stalkers. Alex spots a load of roller mines and tells you to get them, so you go off on a bit of a mini mission to get one. You bring it back to her, and she hacks it with her magical multi-tool, then you set it loose on the stalkers, allowing for you to advance through the room. Weird stuff begins to happen as the citadel's reactor goes critical, like this room where everything starts floating and this bridge where you have to time your crossing to avoid strong and lethal winds. You and Alex see an advisor in the next room that does some weird mind stuff to mess your vision up. Get out of here. The weapon stripper tries again to take the gravity gun, and yet again fails and instead transforms it back into a super weapon. Armed with this, you then go on a massacre, destroying waves of combine forces as you progress towards the citadel's core. You must complete several light bridges by getting energy cores and by shooting them at large energy core holders. This happens a few times, each with extra complications and barriers to make it more difficult. You then head down a long lift and must catch falling debris before it can hit the platform that you stood on. You reach a control panel overlooking the core. Since the whole thing's flooded with radiation, Alex stays there and you head inside to activate three stabilisation laser things. A bit like with the light bridges, each of these requires extra steps to complete. The first is practically handed to you on a platter. You then head into a dangerous corridor with energy cores shooting along it. You fight a bunch of combine and can activate the second device. For the third one, you must hop on a lift, jump over the top of the core, fight waves of manhacks and combine, avoid power cores, clear the room of combine, and then go down below it to power it up with energy core things. This stabilises the citadel's core, buying you and many others time to escape the city. Alex steals a load of information, this proves to be very useful in later episodes, and then you both escape this place, which again is quite useful. You use more hacked balls to beat the combine. Then you hop on a train to get out of here, but it's a stalker carriage. Alex makes out that she pities them, but is clearly repulsed by them and wants to give them a wide berth. God, I hope you don't remember who you were. Unfortunately for her, the train crashes and one lands right on top of her. But Gordon quickly rushes over to save her from it. Gordon, help me! In this chapter, you and Alex head through some underground tunnels, must shine lights to see through the dark, and you rely heavily on her to shoot the zombies. Time has passed since Half-Life 2, and the gun turrets have all run out of ammunition. What could have been a dull moment is made more exciting when I get blown up by a trip mine, down to extremely low health. You reach a dead end and must travel through the ducts to find a way through. All of this is in the dark, with only your flashlight and the odd flare to light the way. You pick up a few more weapons here, but ammo is still scarce. You and Alex eventually stumble upon a new kind of zombie. A combine zombie? <laughs> zombine, get it? 
Okay. Look out! It's got a grenade! The two of you fight through some more dark environments, but it's all quite easy and isn't long before I'm on full health again. So Alex did her bit by blocking me so I got blown up, down to extremely low health again. You make it to a parking lot, and a new gameplay mechanic is revealed. Infinite ant lions will spawn until you can block their tunnels with vehicles. You need to do this because the cranks you need to turn to open doors take so, so long to turn. Once past here, you drop down to a flooded basement, and Alex gets about as close to flirting with you as you could ever hope for. The lift is out of service, so you must follow the cable back to the control panel, which kicks it into action, but also means you get attacked by dozens of zombies as you wait for it to descend, all in pitch blackness. That? That was close. You reach the surface and must find a crank, which can be found at the back of this room here. Let's get to the train yard before the citadel blows. You reach the surface to find City 17 in tatters and the citadel ominously glowing in the background. Dr Breen's broadcasts have been replaced with a much friendlier sounding Dr Kleiner, doing his best to inform people of the situation. A series of useful bulletins in the days ahead. You fight against Combine and Antlions in the streets, covering up the tunnels as you go. Alex leaves you to explore a building filled with trip mines. You must complete a physics puzzle to be able to turn off the gas to allow you to head upstairs. The next street is occupied by a sniper. At the foot of the building he was in, I found some grenades and was able to clear his room out. Then I blinded Alex until she eventually climbed to the building and took control of the sniper for herself, transforming yet another enemy weapon into an advantage that I could exploit. Nope, guess I'm not. I headed off down the street while she provided cover, but only if I could lure the enemies out into the open. Inside this house, I shot the planks off the side to give Alex a clear shot into the corridor to help me. And then back down on the street again, we worked together to take down a combine outpost. At this point, the Citadel's reactor approaches meltdown again, adding a pretty green storm to an already pretty view. Looks like the reactor's back on track for a meltdown. We fought our way through a combine infested building, then faced a boss battle in the streets against an ant lion guardian. Alex took control of a gun turret as I pushed on to clear a basement up ahead, managing to blow myself up yet again. A bit like earlier, Alex expects me to head through a vent system to find a way through, and then she has the nerve to tease me when I drop back down into the room that she's in. Soon? Having gone the right way this time, I find myself in a room filled with explosives. So I get through that and trigger a large chain reaction before hiding in the water as it all goes off. I climb up the lift shaft. Then Alex and I head to the surface again fighting our way through the streets until we're taken into a rebel base. What's the password? I'm not even going to tell you to shut up. Come on in. Dr. Kleiner's speech is getting increasingly awkward. So inclined, now would be an excellent time for procreation. You should give serious consideration to doing your part for the revival of the species. We must make the most of the time we have in attempt to recover. You're right. We don't have time to watch TV. Then finally we bump into Barney again, who shares with us the plan to evacuate everybody via the train station, then lowers a bridge for us to cross, but not before he gives me a little present. Hey Gordon, before you go, I was getting tired of carrying this around. Listen, I don't have many more of these, so try not to lose this one, okay? <laughs> We make it to the hospital, which is overrun with zombies, combine and zombine, and a gunship circling overhead. We head up to the loft, which is fully destructible, and it's here that you must take down the gunship. Alex again confesses her love for you. Jesus, Gordon, you're a real terror. Maybe we should find the 
crowbar just in case. And being the desperate romantic that I am, I do as I'm told. And then it's back down into the hospital again to clear out corridor upon corridor of enemies. Things get serious as Alex puts her pistol away and picks up a shotgun. It's a little too late for these patients. Finally, you escape from these seemingly endless corridors as you drop down into a flooded basement. It's easy to get to the other end of the room, but quite a bit harder to return again once the power's been restored and the water electrified. Get out of here and you regroup with Alex again. There's a hairy moment in this room as zombies begin crowding the surrounding corridors, then start breaking in and attacking your position. Get out of there and you must head down this heavily guarded corridor, dodging the gun turrets at the end. Eventually you're out of the hospital and at the train station. This is the final bit of the game, and there's quite a bit of repetition. The goal is to escort groups of rebels from where Barney is all the way to the train station. With each batch, the enemies get harder and the route gets longer as things end up blowing up or collapsing and obstructing your path. Do this several times and eventually Barney goes with you, signalling that this is the last group to escape from the city. You and Alex wave goodbye to Barney and the last of the citizens. Then you help Alex to get through a gate. But before you can make it through, you're attacked by a strider and must run to safety. As it's shooting you and blowing your surroundings up, you must make it up and through a maze of storage containers, hopping from cover to cover to dodge the worst of the attacks. There are regular health stations and supply crates to keep your health topped up. On the last platform you reach is a rocket launcher, and you can finally dispatch of this damn strider. You meet back up with Alex. Oh, you're my new hero. Then hop on a train and make it out of the city, just as the citadel goes critical. Transmission's going out. 